Hello, this is Christian Idealism, and as you can tell by the title of this video, um, I had to take down one of my older videos, and I I really didn't want to. I was really hesitant at first, but I feel like I need to fix my mistakes. And so in this video, I'm going to explain kind of why um, why I'm t why I'm taking it down. Um, and before I kind of get into the the reasons, um, I just want to let you know, guys, like, always be fine with fixing your mistakes. If you make a mistake, try to fix it, try to retract it, try to, like, you know, be honest with yourself, right? Um, because ultimately, even though I'm an idealist, um, I have to, I have to be objective. I have to... Um, look at that. I have to look at the evidence against my view. I have to look at the arguments against my view, and I have to um, basically, I have to change my beliefs based on evidence. And I had to do that today. Um, I had to change my beliefs based on new evidence that came forth that I didn't know before, um, and that's why I'm taking down one of the videos um, in that series. Um, so let's get into it. So the reason why I'm taking it down is because there are similarities between um, what's called schizophrenia and psychedelic experiences. Um, now, if you go back to the video, if you watched it, my basic argument was simply that because there is a decrease in overall brain activity and an increase in experiences, then therefore the brain is not producing those experiences. Um, however, there seems to be um, similarities between a decrease in overall brain activity with people who have uh, schizophrenia. Um, and if you, there's one study, it's called Reduced Structural Connectivity in Frontal Lobes of White Matter Tracts in the Associated Loop in Schizophrenia. And so it says, quote, these findings demonstrated that structural connectivity is reduced in both segregated and integrated tracts in the associated loop in chronic schizophrenia and that reduced normalized streamlines in the right hemisphere disordered prefrontal cortex seminator predicted worse cognitive control in healthy control subjects but not in chronic schizophrenia patients suggesting a loss of a normal brain behavior correlation in chronic schizophrenia. So it, this is very similar to the argument that Kashrup makes um, that because there's a decrease then in brain activity, then there can't be an increase in experiences. But yet, there's something very similar that happens with schizophrenia, um, where you basically have people that will hallucinate and have like these crazy experiences. But yet, it's still based on the brain. It's still there's still a physical basis, even though um, it's not. Like, even though it's not correlated with any brain activity, it's still there. Um, now, the objection I had initially was this. So if you go to the original study um, that Kashrup uses and that I cited, is that pilocinin caused a significant decrease in the, pos in the prefrontal cortex. These results strongly imply that the subjective effects of psychedelic drugs are caused by decreased activity and connectivity in the brain's key connector hubs, enabling a state of the unconstrained condition. So I, I use the example of the prefrontal cortex. And then if you go to another study, which is actually a meta-analysis of schizophrenia, it says, quote, our results suggest that schizophrenia patients demonstrate an increase in spontaneous brain activity, and specifically the, what I want to point out here is the medial prefrontal cortex, which if you go back to the other study, there is a decrease in that activity, but yet in schizophrenia, it seems like there's an increase. So that's kind of the objection that I used initially. Um, I thought that this was like a direct contradiction, like this showed that there cannot be any link between psychedelic experiences and schizophrenia, which I still hold to that view. Um... I do, I do think that the evidence is not sufficient enough to say that psychedelic experiences are schizophrenic, okay? So I, I just, I just want to make that point clear that 
I'm still undecided on the exact how exactly it works. Okay, so I'm not saying that it's been proven that schizophrenia and psychedelics are the same thing. What I'm saying is that there's evidence for it, but it's not sufficient enough for it to be considered the ex the actual like explanation of the phenomena. However, I want to point out that um, even with this in mind, um, there was a there's actually a a much newer study that that just came out this year, like literally 2020. Um, so this came out after Kashrup wrote his article. This came after I made my video, and the study is called "Pilocinin Induces Time Dependent Changes in Global Functional Connectivity." It says, "Quote: These results." suggests that the integration of functional connectivity in sensory regions and the disintegration in associated regions may underlie the psychedelic state and pinpoint to the critical role of the steroidin 2A and A1 receptor systems. Furthermore, baseline connectivity may represent a predictive marker of the magnitude of changes induced by pilocinin and may therefore contribute to a personalized medicine approach within the potential framework of psychedelic treatment. Um, so this this study is actually very new, and what it does is it actually gives a hypothesis for a physical basis um, of psychedelic experiences. And so if this is the case, then this new data, there's new evidence that kind of came up, seems to undermine the conclusion that psychedelic experiences are not created by the brain, and in fact, there seems to be evidence that there is some sort of physical basis um, for psychedelic experiences. Um, and I, I also want to point out that I looked into Kashrup's work. Um, I even had someone email um, Kelly, Edward Kelly, and none of them had the answer to my objection to these to this to this kind of objection. Um, so like, there's nothing. In, in Kashrup's work that addresses this objection, and there's nothing in Kelly's work that addresses this objection, um, at least not right now. Um, now, of course, I want to also point out that I could be wrong now. Like, maybe I am missing something. Maybe I'm making a mistake. Maybe I, sh I maybe I should keep the video up. Um, but for now, I'm going to not have the video up at all because I feel like. Um, the argument in it is too, it's not clear enough. It's not strong. I don't think it's sufficient enough to be used as evidence for idealism. So it could still be evidence for idealism. Um, the arguments could still work. Like maybe there's something I'm missing, right? But I think with this new evidence, I think while I wouldn't say that the argument that I made in my original video has been completely debunked, I think that it's been critiqued enough that there's enough reason that it should not be used as an argument for idealism. In other words, what I'm saying is that the argument that I used in my video from psychedelic experiences is not sufficient as an argument. So I'm not so again, I'm not saying that the argument doesn't work. I'm not saying that it's been debunked or anything like that. What I'm saying is that it's not good enough. It's not a. It's not an argument that I think I'm, I'm going to be using any longer, which is unfortunate because I've actually, you know, when I had my discussion with Tom Jump, for example, I used that argument, um, and I also cited the argument in other videos that I've done a few times, and so unfortunately I can't, you know, I'm not going to go back to all my videos and cut out every single time I use the argument, but. I'm just going to take down that one video because that's the video that kind of kind of based the argument around. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. But again, if if Castrop has some good response to my concerns here, then I will bring the video back up. I will you I will use it again if if I think that there's a good um, like you know kind of a good explanation. Um, that he gives for why this does not threaten the argument that he makes. So again, I'm I'm totally good with you know changing my views back to where they were before. But for now, I think I'm gonna have to um, take down the video, and um, 
The other thing I want to mention is that Inspiring Philosophy is also going to be taking down his video. However, he's only going to be taking down, um, he's going to take it on the video and then cut out the sections where he uses the argument and then re-upload his video. Um, because I think we can both kind of agree, we're kind of both on the same page that um, at least with this new data involved, um, Cash Trip's argument does not work. So we can't, we're not going to use it. But uh, but yeah, um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. But I also want to point out, I think that's more, more, most important to point out here is that the objections I brought up in this video only apply to that argument. So all the evidence, so like literally all the other arguments that I use on my channel are not affected by this argument. So basically things like near-death experiences, PSI phenomena, the things that I've been going over in my current quantum hermeticism series, like none of the arguments that I use in those videos are affected by me taking down this one video. Um, it's, it's only affecting that video and that's it. So like all the arguments from quantum mechanics, all the arguments from, you know, pretty much everything else is good except for this. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's, again, that's pretty much it guys. Um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. And again, just kind of, you got to always, you know, we got to go by base, base your beliefs on the evidence and change your mind. And that's what I had to do. So, so yeah, I mean, it is what it is, but, um, as far as the video itself goes, I'm not, it's not going to be deleted from YouTube. Rather, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to make the video private and then so that like no one, no one can watch it except for me. So like only I, I only I have the ability to like actually watch the video if I w ever wanted to. It's just so that in case I ever change my mind, then I, then I'll put it back up. But for now, I'm just going to keep it as a private video. So like only I can watch it and no one else can watch it. And so, um, so yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Um, thank you guys for watching and have a nice day.